Hello, beautiful strangers, and welcome back to another episode of Sakura no Mori Dreamers. When last we left off, uh, Shinji was, well, he fell off a cliff, and, well, <laughs> there's not much I can do to sugarcoat that or try to joke about that. He fell off a cliff while being chased by some, uh, something. I don't really know. Hi, cat. And I sat in the same position for so long, I gave myself, I, I developed a crick in my neck. So that's fun. But, uh, yeah, hi, cat. You just pushed a button on my mouse. Thank you for that. That's very helpful of you. It's morning, Shinji. Oh, I guess I should technically make his zzz sounds. I also noticed a weird thing whenever, uh, whenever, um, this game, uh, OBS does not do well. Or it's the game. I'm not sure with, or it's both. Um, it doesn't do well when I go scrolling through my backlog. Um, it seems to very slightly break. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. OBS is having weird issues with this game and text. Uh, so I, I, I have no idea. Anyway. It's morning, Shinji. <clears throat> morning. Good morning. Normally, Hatsune would have left my room as soon as I woke up. But today, she was staring right at me with a worried look in her eyes. Are you okay? Mom said you'd be skipping school and going to the hospital today. Uh, yeah. I shook my head a few times, then nodded. I had a light headache yesterday, but I'm not feeling anything today. That's good. Good morning. I sat at the table and checked the TV before beginning to eat. Has it been reported yet? No. Hmm? Table manners, Shinji? Right. I nodded, but my eyes remained fixed on the screen. Yesterday evening, a woman was found unconscious in the mountains on the outskirts of Sakura no Mori. Though paramedics were immediately contacted, she was declared dead soon after arriving at the local hospital. I don't know if it's different in Japan, but typically in the States you can declare someone dead at the scene, so that's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if it's the same in Japan, like they have to be declared dead by a doctor or, or something like that, but uh, here, here in the States, you can be declared dead, you know, at the scene of an accident. And if you find a corpse somewhere, they're not going to go, well, I, I, we, well, we can't declare it dead at the scene. We'll have to go to the hospital and make sure. Typically, uh, typically you have tells or something like that. And I know this because uh, I've done stuff with, not exactly police, but... Um, I took some, what are they called, law enforcement classes in high school. It was just, it was like an extracurricular magnet thing. It was just extra credit bullshit, basically. Um, that was just learning about laws, law enforcement, that sort of stuff. Very interesting, but also very boring. According to the police report, she was a student at, lo at a local school, Miss Kisaki Yurika. Kisaki Yurika. Oh no, she was still young. She was still practically still a kid. Almost the same age as you two. I didn't really have any time to scrutinize her appearance when I discovered her. Now I'm kind of curious about going back and seeing if she had the same uniform that we have. I don't care that much. And I won't remember when I finish the episode. I had no idea she was so young. She had suffered a single stab wound to her lower abdomen. Police have deemed the case a homicide and have organized a search party of approximately 50 officials. I knew it. I uttered it to myself. It was pretty insane. Her stomach area was all stained. It looked more like ink than blood in the darkness. I don't think this is something you should be talking about at the breakfast table, my dude. Sorry. I probably shouldn't have said that. I turned to face the table and silently started to work on my breakfast. Take care. Good luck. See ya. See ya. It felt odd to see them off to school. Well then, I think it's about time for us to go too. Okay. We returned to the house, got what we needed, and left. 
It was actually quite unusual for me to walk with Miss Miyako in town at this hour. Actually, this may have been the first time. We don't really go out much together. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. This is not exactly an exciting outing, but I really hope you're okay. I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Even the headache get passed by morning. I see. Miyako was my aunt by blood, which made Hatsune my cousin. She was my mother's younger sister. After I lost my parents to the accident, she adopted me and raised me as her son. Huh, that makes the, uh... The, uh, crush from Hatsune a bit weirder. But I guess it's a bit different in different countries, so I don't know. Weird to me, anyway. I couldn't have thanked her enough. How do you feel about Madoka? Eh? What? That came out of nowhere. I'm asking if you like her. Uh-huh. Is that such a surprising question? You two are around the age where you should start thinking about these kinds of things? Actually, I'd, I'd go out on a limb and say they're a bit old for that because they're in high school, but, you know, maybe that's just me. As a matter of fact, I think they're second years in high school, which is... 15-ish in the States? Right? Right? Yeah, something like that. Miyako regarded me with gentle eyes as I fell silent. Not that this is something a parent should stick their noses into. Oh, please, but not like parents don't do that all the time. I never thought about it. I imagine so, but you may not be able to keep that up for long. Let me just tell you one thing, if that's all right. It's only natural to be attracted to members of the opposite sex. The look in Miyako's eyes was of utmost seriousness. I don't want you to try and suppress those kinds of perfectly natural feelings. Was that related to me losing my parents? I had the feeling it was. I gave her a silent nod. The doctor spent quite a while examining me in the hospital. But the result was the same. There was nothing wrong with me. Thank goodness. Yeah. Not that it was unexpected, but I was still relieved. It was a miracle I managed to live through the fall without as much as a scratch. Phew. And now that that's over with, I'm actually feeling a little hungry. I'm going to drop by the supermarket. What are you going to do? Can you go, uh, can you get home by yourself? Of course. Uh, I'm not a child anymore. I suppose that's true. I'll be back as soon as I finish shopping, so go ahead of me. Also, what would you like for lunch? Yakisoba. Yakisoba, huh? Roger. You know, it always strikes... It always uh, something I think about, rather, whenever I see it in any kind of media, that I'm very weird because I don't eat lunch. I eat breakfast, like, pretty soon after I wake up, and I eat dinner, and that's about it. I very occasionally snack in the afternoon, almost never. I I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've actually snacked on anything in like the last year in the afternoon. In the evenings, I'm a bit more likely to snack, especially if I'm drinking something. Like I like, uh, whenever I drink wine, I like, I crave savory foods. I used to crave salmon, but I don't anymore. Um, not really, I just crave savory foods in general. But you know. It's neither here nor there. And beer, I don't, because beer is heavy, but I don't drink beer very much. And liquor is just kind of a... Whatever I was in the mood for earlier, I kind of crave that even more. So, eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm getting off task. It felt odd to walk around outside in an hour we'd normally be in class. But I'd only make it to sixth period even if I went to school right now, so I decided to skip completely. How many periods do you have in your high school? I don't actually know what, like, normal Japanese schooling is. When I was in high school, we had blocked schedules. Um, so we had an A day and a B day. Um, and it was four day, uh, four periods each day, then five. Um, when I, I think it was changed to five. I'm going to say my junior year of high school. Because the principal wanted to prove that it was, uh, that he could do it and he could put more 
credit hours or some dumb bullshit like that to the dismay of literally every single teacher in the school because he was an ass kisser to district and he wanted to prove that he was smart and he deserved a district position and yeah he doesn't and didn't and they basically gave him a here have this shut the fuck up and stop messing with this position it's um i don't remember what the position is but from what i've been told he was given the uh what is essentially the we're going to give you this position and you're going to end up quitting in the next five years because it's a miserable position. I don't remember what it was, though. I don't know if he's still there or not. Uh, I don't care because <laughs> uh, he, he changed like a year after I went to high school. So I still had a couple of friends that were there and I was friendly with a couple of teachers at the time. And anyway, I reminisced about the accident as I walked. Back then. My memories of everything since I jolted awake felt unusually vague. I didn't forget them, but it was like a cloud of mist covered everything, making it hard to put the events together. The doctor said that wasn't unusual given my circumstances. I pressed down on my pedals, anxious to chase the setting sun at first. But a killer began chasing after me, or chasing me after riding for a bit. Who was that? The police showed no interest in that part of my story, so maybe a kid like me should stay away from it as well. But the corpse I found, I had the feeling that she was most likely killed by the same monster. There was a murderer roaming the streets of Sakura no Mori. The moment I thought of that, I felt as though someone had pressed a lump of ice against my back. I suddenly grew worried about Miss Miyako and turned back toward the grocery store. Except... Huh. Ah, fucking every time. Every time. That's pretty cool looking. I... I, uh... I prefer my Eldritch Horrors to be a bit more Geiger-esque, but, you know. You, you take what you can get. That's pretty cool looking. I like that. Huh? I let a squeak that hardly sounded like human speech. Huh? I strained my eyes and kept blinking, unable to comprehend what it was that I was seeing. This bastard didn't disappear right away. It didn't feel like a hallucination. There was an undeniable physical presence in front of me. What? My body began to shake all over. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. I like that. Good shit. It's good shit, pal. Uh, 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 hi there, Mr. Monster. You've acknowledged me. You have two rows of teeth. That seems very bad and very good for ripping and tearing things, but very bad for me. Uh, uh, intense fear. That had to be what I was feeling. I felt like something was crawling under my skin. He had to run. He had to run. Yet, my ref legs refused to listen. It felt like they had been chained to the ground. This was definitely one of the shadows I kept seeing before. Does this mean they weren't ever hallucinations to begin with? These things usually disappeared in the blink of an eye, but now one was standing before me, showing no signs of going away. In that moment, Miss Miyako appeared from the supermarket with a bunch of shopping bags in her hand. She noticed me and waved hello. Stay there. Startled, she hurried toward me. Uh, my knees began to shake in response to the sudden sense of powerlessness. She couldn't see it. But then... When I thought they'd collide, the shadow somehow teleported a bit further away. What's wrong? Shinji, are you okay? Shinji? She gave each of my cheeks a light slap. The fact that I was looking off into the distance confused her. It must have looked like I was staring at empty space to her. Sorry. 
See, you are tired after all. Let's hurry home and have dinner. You mean lunch? Or whatever. All right. Miss Miyako placed a hand on my back and we moved down the street, almost clinging to each other. I understood what was making her worry, but I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't think of a scenario where she'd believe me if I told the truth. It'd only make her worry even more if she saw me glancing around, so I kept my neck still and just searched with my eyes. I couldn't see the thing anywhere anymore. But just as I started to relax, I suddenly overcame I was suddenly overcame with an urge to turn around. I felt like the thing had stuck to my back and like that followed me all the way home. I'll be digging in. Slurp. Your noodles are getting cold. What happened back there? Miss Miyako's eyes looked straight at me. Nothing. Didn't look like nothing to me. You let out a cry and then what you said. I had no choice but to fall silent. I'd only worry her more if I started talking about seeing monsters or whatever that was. Eventually, Miss Miyako let out a resigned sigh and began eating. I wish doctors said I still needed to have more tests done. Then I could at least treat this event as my mind purely playing tricks on me, but they assured us there was nothing wrong with me. Could they have made a mistake? I thanked Miss Miyako for the food and shut myself away in my room. I felt as though the shadow appeared suddenly earlier, but maybe that was the other way around. Maybe I just became able to see it. I knew what caused it all right. The accident. There were no obvious wounds on my body, but I hit my head and that may have messed it up in some way. I mean, you can't really see the effects of CTE in a, of on or the exact effects of CTE on a living brain. Um, at least that's my understanding. You can't see the deposits that it makes. Mm, well, well. Uh, getting hit in the head is bad. Brain injuries are bad, even if there's nothing immediately obvious. There was something akin to a thin membrane that covered the entirety of reality. And I must have been able to perceive it for the first time in that plane crash. You could have said it was a hallucination my brain created to cope with the situation, and I'd have no way to refute that, but instead, I felt that I felt that said membrane tore slightly, and I caught a glimpse of the other world hiding behind it. And it couldn't be undone. The hallucinations, this gap between worlds, this was now a part of my life. These were the shadows that I saw. But now the terror had increased. This whole other world was starting to show itself before me. Hmm? Shinji, where are you going? I'm going out. Out? I realized I had no reason to run and slowed down. If anything, it made it, made it harder to spot anything in my surroundings. I couldn't find a trace of the thing. An odd sensation of relief mixed with disappointment took over me. I checked the time on my phone only to realize it was growing surprisingly late. I'd completely forgotten myself. It was neither afternoon nor evening, but the park seemed to be bustling with the usual activity. None of those families and couples could have imagined that there existed another reality of ghastly terrors, just a tiny step outside of their reality. Right. The club activities would usually end around this time, so I texted Madoka and Hatsune and headed to school. I found them waiting for me in front of the gate. Thanks for waiting. 
Shinji? Shinji? What happened? That mail came out of nowhere. Uh, it's just... Just... Mm. Hmm? The two exchanged confused looks. Let's hurry on home. Uh, wait, uh, wait for me. I listened to the footsteps of the two behind me. I was weary of my surroundings as I walked, though I was a little disappointed earlier. It would have been, it would, it would be for the best if none of these things would ever appear before me again. How did your doctor's visit go? Uh, they said I was perfectly fine. That's great. Really? After that message, we thought something serious had happened. Unfortunately, I felt like I ended up with a bigger problem than any sort of mere physical wound. See ya. Yeah. Bye-bye. Are you planning on going back to your apartment? I'm not sure if Miss Miyako is there at my house. Yeah, I gotta go change. And I'll walk you home. Really? I nodded and began walking ahead of her. Even if you didn't count a sudden appearance at school, Shinji was acting strange today. But it still made me genuinely happy to have him walk me home. Did anything unusual happen at school today, Hatsune? Huh? Unusual? A sudden question took Hatsune off guard. No, I mean, I skipped school today, right? I don't think anything particularly unusual happened. I see. Do you need anything else besides change? If that's all, then I'll wait for you here. Uh, okay, I'll make it quick. Just what was I doing? I was worried about my family and childhood friend, but I couldn't be their bodyguard 24-7. Besides, just what kind of being was that thing anyway? It looked like it could see me, but it didn't seem like it meant me any harm. Still, it couldn't be completely harmless. I wasn't only saying that because of its appearance. The sight of it terrified me on an instinctual level. These things were bad news. That I knew without a doubt. And I think here I'm going to finish off. Not quite as cliffhanger as I want, but I have, uh, I have developed a very bad headache over the past few minutes. So, uh, next time... <laughs> Will you see it? Will Shinji see another one of those things? Well, I'm sure that's not the end of that. <laughs> so, find out how soon next time. Well, I hope to see you all there. <laughs>